So, uh, for the ones of you, uh, the, the few of you <laughs> who do not know me already, uh, my name is uh, Gianfranco Cicconi. Uh, together with Eline Liklai and Arians, uh, wave hello, Eline, you there, okay? Uh, we are part of the team who runs the uh, European Data Portal, that is the largest European Union project uh, for the promotion of open data among the member states uh, and beyond the member states. Uh, we are filling in uh, for Cosmina Radu, also from the team who could not make it today, uh, but is the main author, uh, together with me, of the uh, 2018 Open Data Maturity Report and of the shorter uh, analytical report that is the focus of our webinar specifically today. Uh, the report is called uh, Open Data Best Practices in Europe's Top Performance. Uh, we publish it first in April. Its objective is to highlight um, the best practices of the countries that scored the best in our uh, early landscaping and benchmarking exercise, the so-called uh, Open Data Maturity Report. Uh, in 2018, uh, the top performing countries were Ireland, uh, Spain and France. So my guests today are uh, from Ireland, uh, Marianne Bakey. Uh, she works at Data Gold IE uh, in the Open Data Unit in the Department of Public Expenditure and Reform. And I'll, I'll let you correct me anytime if you need to. I, um, and the challenge will be particularly for the ones I translate this from to English. So from Spain, Alaida Alcade Garcia uh, from the General Secretariat of Digital Administration, Ministry of Territorial Policy and Public Function. She coordinates the Open Data Strategy together with the Secretary of State for digital development. Is it right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's right. And uh, from France, we, uh, I, I'm sure we'll be joined soon by uh, Romain Tal, uh, Tal from Etalab, that is a task force uh, reporting to the Fran French Prime Minister, that among the other things, is responsible for the promotion of open data at uh, the interministerial direction for the French government information systems. Uh, so, uh, the agenda for today is quite straightforward. There's a first part of the webinar in which I will uh, describe our finding from our uh, latest iteration of our landscaping study. There are common factors between the three countries that um, score the best and help them achieve and sustain uh, quite ambitious open data policies. And uh, there are different trends and development at the UN country level. And I'm, I will try to share those with you and particularly the four dimensions uh, that we use for our assessment in case you are new uh, to the open data maturity work we do. Uh, after that, uh, the speakers will discuss their specific experience and their open data best practices in their respective countries. Um, I believe they will be supported by presentations that they will share with us already. Um, so uh, that will take most of the time. Each presentation will be followed by a short Q&A focused on that specific speaker and experience. And at the end, depending on time, we will have a session uh, together for questions. Uh, I uh, reiterate that in case you have any problems with your microphone or anything, uh, you can use the chat room to make your questions or comments. Uh, I'm checking again quickly for Roman. Not here yet. Uh, and I believe I can start uh, with my own introduction, unless there are any questions first. Okay, I take this as an okay. And let's start about us. So the European Data Portal, uh, for the ones of you who don't know it yet, it's uh, quite an interesting and large project uh, from uh, the European Commission. We've been around for a few years now. Uh, the name is actually a bit misleading. There is a portal, but it's not just about the portal. The portal is the um, first and possibly largest, I would say, uh, metadata catalog for all national open data across Europe. Um, uh, not many uh, perhaps can tell from just looking at it that you can actually search for data in your own language across all of Europe because the metadata is translated magically in the background uh, so that you can search and find whatever you like across what is published through the national data portals in Europe. Uh, on the side, we help uh, the governments, uh, mostly at national level, but not only, uh, to try to publish uh, more and better data. Now, of course, in the case of the three countries we have as a guest today, there's not much for us to do, we just watch. <laughs> uh, while on the other side, uh, we promote open data uh, in the public. And that's a never ending activity, as you can imagine. There's a component of legacy, even just in understanding what data can, you, can do for you. 
and beyond that explaining what open data specifically as a resource means for you uh, perhaps as a uh, entrepreneur or uh, as a uh, activist or as a person involved in in um, civil activity of any kind so the edp is a, in my opinion but it's very easy for me to say perhaps it's a very valuable resource uh, that is actually for you uh, in europe uh, to to learn and pick from and, and please feedback and ask us what you would like us to be next uh, and, and and keep this resource alive and kicking if we talk about specifically the work we do for um, um, benchmarking, and benchmarking and marketing, there is some echo. Let me see who is not on mute. Oh, you can't come. I don't know. So, okay. Okay. So let's just start from this. Um, I was saying, I was describing the work we do in terms of uh, data maturity, landscaping, and assessment. Oh, in the meantime, I see Roman joined us. Hi, Roman. Uh, you only lost the, the general introduction, so you'll be fine. Um, the open data maturity um, uh, work we do every year that assesses the work that you countries uh, and the countries do. Uh, in terms of implementation of the open data programs, uh, not only, but also uh, as an implementation of the uh, public sector information directive. Uh, that is the piece of legislation in, in Europe that gives direction to the member states to publish open data in the interest of the citizens and the businesses in their countries. There are four dimensions in particular uh, that we assess. Uh, the first is uh, policy, uh, usually related to the strategic vision of uh, the member states we're talking about and how it is implemented through policy and governance in the country. There is a dimension of portal, or you may call it of a platform. So what are the tools that the state makes available uh, to its citizen? Uh, there is a component of quality, of course. Uh, data is not useful just per se. It, it has to match some degree of some elements, some characteristics so that it can actually be put to use uh, on the other side of the publisher. And finally, a bit more challenging, the impact side of things. Are we actually changing uh, the world thanks to this data? Um, it's, the, it's a bit of a chimera, it's difficult to monitor, difficult to measure, but it's an integral component of what we are trying to do in achieving those for, in developing uh, the, the transformation for open data for the countries. There are elements that this year in particular we have um, observed across um, the, the most performers is not just the top three. Uh, on the policy side, so again, starting from the left, we have observed a much stronger awareness of a strategic vision for open data uh, that is then implemented in policy and accompanied by a strong and consistent uh, governance structure. In many cases, actually, we see that uh, the governments that are struggling delivering good open data are poor on governance, not because they want to, but sometimes it's a natural obstacle of perhaps how they, uh, how they work together. Um, in, feder in federal states, for example, it's quite hard for the people responsible at national level to get the policies and the directions implemented down to the local levels of government. It's just a natural uh, friction that exists in that kind of structures. From a portal perspective, from a technology perspective or platform perspective, uh, we have noticed a, ra a rise of um, interaction features to bring the users together around the portal, uh, making them more engaging. It's not just the uh, national government from the Avery Tower publishing data down, it is actually um, uh, the community coming together using the website as one of the venues where that happens. And there is also some degree of catering for a broader audience than perhaps uh, we used to do. So we are more aware of how diverse the public can be on the other side of the publishing portal. For quality, uh, there is, um, uh, I believe, more attention to getting the data um, up to date. And uh, in a way, this also crosses with the platform component. There is more um, care to make the data discoverable for real. And discoverability is through metadata. So if the quality of the metadata is good, the data will be 
more easily discoverable. Monitoring also as part of quality is something to be considered important. The best portals usually are very well aware of what the users are doing, what they're using the most, where the users are struggling or feeling frustrated about. And finally, on the impact side, um, in a way it closes naturally the whole line uh, from the strategic definition and definition of the objectives at the beginning. Uh, the better the awareness, uh, the more uh, likely uh, the, the member states will try to also observe the impact of the whole process and what they've done. And in particular, this is possible where the member states focused on specific data ecosystems or thematical domains, say transport or health. Um, restricting a little the scope, at least for focusing, uh, helps uh, focusing your attention and, and in a way defining objectives and monitoring what happens. Um, as usual, I'm, I speak too much, but I'm Italian, so you need to forgive me. Uh, one last, perhaps interesting slide from us. Um, particularly in the uh, short report that we're talking about today, there is this kind of line we, we try to draw between the strategy and the uh, observation of impact on the other side. These six steps you see in the slide now are some kind of a general um, recipe uh, that goes through definition of objectives, monitoring of what you achieved, and the benchmarking at the end decide what to do next and how to correct what you've done. This seems to be a general pattern uh, that I believe the three uh, member states that are guests uh, today uh, with us uh, demonstrate very well. And you will see, I'm sure, elements of this across um, their experiences when uh, they will start describing their own work. Um, Without pointing the finger at anybody here, uh, you will see that the, the top countries are the ones in the orange uh, uh, circle to the right, the, what we call the trendsetters. Those are the countries where we can observe the more interesting changes and developments, and the ones that seem to be more successful in pushing the programs forward. Um, I personally do not worry too much where exactly you fall in this kind of line. What it is really interesting is to see progress and that perhaps is the value of repeating this exercise every year. Um, personally, as a reader of the report, what I actually read is not the scores, but the use cases, what, what the countries tell us as stories of what happened since last year in terms of progress of new policies or implementation of changes in how they run uh, the programs. That is most easy, that is most interesting to me at least. And I believe that is what this um, diagram and the, the the explanation of that in the full report uh, will give you in more detail. I believe that we all know um, what we have to do. So some of the choices to deliver a great open data program are difficult. Um, I'm, I'm sure that all of the countries, not only the less successful one, but also the most successful one, need to fight for their budget, need to fight against bureaucracy, need to pull the most valuable data sets out of very hardly locked drawers to get them out. Um, we all know uh, what we have to do, what is the right thing to do. Sometimes it's just difficult and, and hard. And that is one of my favorite jokes from, from Jean-Claude Juncker. Uh, we all know what we have to do. We just don't know how to get reelected after we've done it. Um, I, I, I'm sure some of you make uh, a job that is not necessarily that pleasing or not always that satisfying, but you're fighting the good fight. Uh, and I, I close my little intervention here, handing over uh, to the countries and, and thanking you for, for the work you do um, in, in this space. If uh, Marian is ready, I would hand over to her. Okay, and we'll share our screen, Jan Franco, is that okay? Yep. Yeah. Okay, so you said it can start sh screen sharing while you're sharing, so you'll have to unshare first. Yeah, I'm going there. <laughs> so. okay. You see that? Yeah, we can see it. Excellent. Can you hear? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Fine. All right. Okay. 
So uh, good afternoon from Dublin. So uh, my name is Marion Beakey, as Jean Franco said earlier, and I'm standing in for Rhoda Kearns, who's the head of the Open Data Unit here uh, in Ireland. She's on holidays at the moment. And uh, with me here today is Deirdre Lee from Derlinx, and Deirdre provides uh, advice and uh, technical support um, with our company Derlinx for the Open Data Initiative here in Ireland. And she's also my technical assistant for today. <laughs> So um, as uh, Aline had suggested, um, I'm just briefly going to go uh, through some slides here just to um, just uh, on the four areas, uh, policy, um, our portal policy and a few examples uh, of reuse. Uh, I have quite a few slides, so uh, I might skip through some of them and uh, certainly we're happy to answer any questions afterwards. So um, just the first slide here, uh, we use this when we're given our presentations on open data. We're very proud of the fact that uh, we retained our number one rating um, across the EU in 2018. And uh, we just recently sent our completed questionnaire for 2019 into Cosmina, and uh, we're waiting in anticipation for the results uh, of the 2019. Um, just at uh, the next slide here, it just shows, I suppose, the progress that we've made. Um, so as you can see, we were ranked 18th in 2015, which reflects the fact that uh, our national open data initiative really just started uh, in 2014. And uh, so then we moved up to first place in 2017. And again, uh, we're very pleased with the progress that we've made uh, in that very short period of time. Um, so just to, to go through um, our initiative, uh, as I said, uh, uh, the, initiative, the national initiative commenced in 2014. Prior to that, there was some open data um, activity, particularly in the local authority areas. And um, at the time, the minister that we had was very interested in openness and transparency. Uh, we joined the Open Government uh, Partnership around that time, and then we um, commenced our open data initiative. And uh, it's run by a small team here based in the Department of Public Expenditure Reform. And we also have policy responsibility for the reuse of public service information directive. So um, just we started in 2014, the national portal uh, was put in place then, data.gov.ie. Uh, we also put in place a technical framework, and this underpins the publication of open data. So it st sets out the standards and the formats uh, that um, public service organizations must conform to when they're publishing open data. We have a governance structure in place, um, our board, again, that was put in place in 2015. Um, and then we had uh, our strategy launched in 2017. Uh, that's a five-year strategy and implementation of that is, is um, currently underway. So then just quickly, our open data initiative, uh, just to say that it's aligned with um, the broader um, public service reform agenda here in Ireland and another data initiatives such as our public service data strategy, um, the national data infrastructure. Um, so I just, I suppose, first of all, just to cover the policy. Um, so this is our open data strategy. It was published uh, in July 2017. So this strategy uh, was approved uh, by our government. So it is national uh, policy, um, which really helps us when we're trying to push uh, the open data program. Um, there was a really um, a public consultation uh, process um, prior to its publication, where we brought in a number of our stakeholders uh, to talk to our board and they really input into the strategy as it was developed. Uh, the two core objectives, uh, publication of high value government data in open format and then engaging with the broad community of stakeholders to promote its reuse. And then the seven themes that, um, that, that follow down through there, I won't read them all out, but it's supporting stakeholders, supporting um, publication of open data, its reuse, uh, and in the longer term, um, the evaluation of the impact and benefits of the initiative. Uh, the strategy also has um, an action plan. Uh, it's appended to it. There's 40 very specific actions. Um, and uh, we, we get public service organizations to implement these over the five-year program. Um, some of the key actions there um, are public bodies. We're asking them to carry out data audits and put in place publication plans. Um, we have uh, organized for open data liaison officers to be uh, included within each public service organization. So we have 70 in place at the moment. And what they do is they promote the open data initiative and they're our central point of contact with that public body. Uh, we've also put um, capacity uh, and uh, support frameworks in place, training, um, and um, an, a, 
and con continue then in the longer term to, I suppose what our vision is that Jean Franco mentioned earlier was that in the longer term, uh, it would be moving hopefully to a, a situation where all newly created data sets would be open by default as a matter of course. Uh, I just mentioned the training. Um, we have training rolled out since 2017. Um, I think we have um, some three or four hundred, I think 300 public servants um, trained um, since it started and it's been renewed now for another year. Um, and just as well to help public service organisations um, in their data publishing, we have a procurement um, framework where they can draw down support for um, carrying out data audits and uh, anonymization of data. And as I mentioned, we have our open data li liaison officers in place as well. Um, I think Jean Franco mentioned uh, governance. We have an open data governance board in place. So they oversee the implementation of our strategy and they give us strategic direction and strategic advice. Uh, there's some 10 members on the board. They're mostly external members from business, academia, research, um, civil society. And uh, just back in 2018, we reconstituted the board just to make sure that we had the right skill and expertise on it. Um, because uh, they're supported by ourselves in the Open Data Unit, and we also have an advisory group, and these are made up of, um, of uh, people who have uh, expert uh, technical um, experience across the public service uh, from organisations that we would see as being the champions of open data. Um, so just with regard to outreach and engagement, this is uh, like a key element of our strategy. Uh, we have an engagement fund in place since 2016, uh, it's 30,000 um, of a budget each year, and it goes through, um, we put through a call for proposals. So we have funded some 30 um, projects uh, to date, and these include hackathons, competitions, the building of applications. And what we then we use these use cases uh, to um, bring them back to the public service organizations to really to show them what can be done with their data. Um, then with Jarlinks, uh, we've been rolling out a series um, of uh, open data impact series, uh, the stream and how to date. Um, and we have an annual open data conference. Uh, Jean Franco spoke about that last year, and we have our, our next one now next November. And of course, uh, we have ongoing uh, engagement and presentations at, at conferences. Uh, just in relation to the impact series, um, as I said, these are organized in conjunction with Jarlinks. Um, what these are about is really bringing uh, data uh, publishers and data reusers um, together uh, in the same room. There are thematic events. We've had one on transport, one on business, uh, and one on environment. And uh, we have found them uh, very effective um, in, in, in trying to measure our impact and, and to, get, um, to get the users and the publishers talking to each other. Um, just the second element then is the portal. And as I said, it was uh, initially um, launched in 2014. And this is our new homepage, um, which was just launched there uh, last month. Um, we have 8,800 data sets, uh, over 100 publishers, some 16,500 visitors per month. Um, last year, we kind of launched the third iteration, where we moved from CCAN and Drupal to CCAN. And, um, we won a new government award in 2017 and nominated for a World Summit Award in 2018. So uh, we're quite proud of, of our portal. Um, we have a harvest from a number of um, organizations. I think we have some 10 harvesters or more. Say more than that, more than that in place. Think. Yeah. Um, we have also uh, quite a lot of, um, uh, of data sets um, available via API. I think we have over 500 um, data sets by API, such as the real-time passenger information. Um, we also last year for the survey, so when somebody downloads a data set, they're asked to complete a quick survey as to um, you know, who they are, what, what they're using the data for, uh, have they any feedback on the portal, um, if they have a showcase, do they want to, to put it on the portal, and we found that very effective as well. And uh, I suppose we're continually enhancing the portal. Um, we uh, launched our newsletter some two months ago. We have put in place a developer's corner to assist reusers, users and uh, our, new, our new homepage in place. And uh, plans going forward are for a series of impact stories, uh, an Irish language version of the portal and um, some functionality to allow feedback on specific data sets. This is just an example of some of our publishers. 
our Environmental Protection Agency, um, Ordnance Survey Ireland, who are a national, national mapping agency, um, Central Statistics Office, Marine Institute, and then just some of the functionality we have suggested data set, um, maybe a sort of mixed success on getting uh, suggestions uh, live on the portal. Uh, we have 126 suggestions to date. Uh, we have a showcase page where we have 14 showcases. And uh, then we have a number of resources and publications, again, just to support um, our data publishers. Um, and just, we have a statistics um, page as well. Okay. So then just moving to quality, uh, I mentioned earlier, we have a technical framework. It was put in place around the time the portal was set up. And that um, basically sets out um, it sets out uh, the, the standards to which data should be published and it is licensed formats, metadata schema, um, there's five different elements there. Uh, just to quickly go through them, I suppose the license, um, our license of, for Ireland, we use the CCBY4 um, attribution. I think 98% of uh, our data sets on the portal um, are uh, attributed to that license. Um, we work with public service organizations as well who might have issues, and this is just one example where we uh, have put a custom license uh, in place, which is, is for our meteorological service. They were a little bit anxious about wedding warnings, so we worked with them to put a custom license in place, so they were happy then to start publishing on the portal. Um, again, we just um, use the five star, um, so what we ask our publishers is that their data conforms to at least three star. So that is available in CSV or JSON. Um, and again, I think some 98% uh, of our um, data on the portal uh, is at least three star. And uh, just uh, I suppose impact, I just have a couple of examples here of um, I suppose some of our more, um, um, our more popular data sets. This is the real time passenger information. Um, it's available via API and there's been a huge amount of applications built on foot of this uh, so that people can track when the train is going to come, whether it's going to be late when the, the next bus is arriving. Um, this is another example then, um, it reaches .ie. Again, this is built using um, local authority um, water um, data, water quality data, and um, people can go on and just see what the water quality and the different beaches uh, are around Ireland. And then finally, this is just another of our very uh, popular data sets, which is national planning applications. Uh, and again, this myplan.ie has been built on foot of that, um, which uh, provides spatial information to inform decision making on, on planning applications and, and building of houses. And uh, finally, just an example from our own department here, we publish um, the um, expenditure figures for um, our government departments. And um, there's a dashboard that has been built on the foot of that, where your money goes, .ie. People can drill down and see um, where uh, the kind of money has been spent across government departments over the various years. Um, I think I'm running out of time here, so um, we're very happy to answer any questions. And uh, I'll just leave our uh, email address there as well in case anybody wants to email us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Marion. Um, I'm checking on the uh, chat to see if anybody wants to make a question. Uh, I, I see probably a, an, an, an involuntary comment about, uh, but from Georgia to probably a colleague, Daniele, saying, they are good. Loro sono bravi. <laughs> Sorry, I hope I didn't go too fast. Uh, you, you understood me. <laughs> um, I invite the audience, you can make your compliment in, in the clear very, very nicely. And uh, yeah, Georgia confirms uh, her Thank message. Thank you very much. Uh, any questions for uh, Marion before we, we go to the next one? I perhaps have a suggestion or a question that I would drop the oh, actually the, the Jakub says, doesn't the additional requirement in the license uh, break the openness of the license? Oh, this is a very long conversation. Um, Jakub, I suggest we deal with this at the end because I've, uh, I've been at the center of many arguments uh, uh, between is it, is it by open enough? Should we go for uh, CC zero? And, and th that's a very long conversation. I would suggest we keep it for, for the end. Uh, okay. Uh, one last drop uh, of an idea for me, but perhaps to discuss later, uh, Mariam. Uh, you, you said that the suggest uh, data set feature was a mixed success. And I was thinking also to 
the challenge of data literacy in general across all countries. So don't answer me now, perhaps we'll skip it for the end, but it will be interesting to, to know from you uh, what your hypotheses are on, on the good and the bad of that initiative and if data literacy perhaps can be one of the causes of or perhaps the obvious ones uh, to that creates a sort of a friction between the possible, the best infrastructure we can offer uh, the audience and on the other side, the actual users still struggling perhaps to understand the basics. But hold the thought, uh, we'll get back to you later and thank you again. Uh, Aleida, would you like to take it next? Yeah. Uh, do you have the, the presentation? I already sent it to Eline, but I can I share it with you if not. I believe so. Eline, can you put it on screen, please? One moment, let me get it up. Yep. One second. Do you see? Yeah. Okay. So feel free to go. Perfect. Okay. Thanks. So good morning. I'm uh, Aleida Alcaide, as Gianfranco said before, for, for the new participants of the of the webinar. I am uh, the head of area for open data and digital identity in the government's general secretary of the Ministry of Territorial Policy and Civil Service. So I would like to, to start saying that uh, for Spain, open data is uh, one of the priorities of the political agenda. Uh, for us, open data is more than publishing now um, the data that the, public, that the public sector has, but a comprehensive full of set of activities, uh, as you can see in the following slide. Uh, can you pass it, Elin, the, the first, the first the following uh, slide? I shared access to the screen with you. Okay, so I can pass it. Okay, perfect. Well, so um, the issue is always saying that is that we have a um, I have a lot of um, activities that uh, uh, compose the, the, the activities of the digital, the, the open data uh, strategic framework. We use the, um, to, to make these initiatives to be more uh, known, we use like um, something like we call a marketing brand, that's a, a portal. So a portal means in Spanish contribu contribution or contribu contributed. Uh, and, and the idea is to, to share the data that the public sector has with everybody and to, to have this, like a type, this type of brand to make it um, more easily known. What we do here in uh, our vision is that um, the, the, the main thing is that we have like seven action areas to implement the, the open data policy. The first one of them is uh, what we call the dissemination and awareness activities. We are quite focused on updating uh, our web channels with news about open data, offer guidelines and training with experts, for example, from university or private and public sector, and organize um, different workshops during all the year and forums, sectoral forums or annual events to make all the, the initiatives of open data known and also to, to make uh, the public and the private entities to have um, a, a meeting space where they can dialogue and they can uh, think about new, new experiences and new initiatives. Another of the pillars of our, st our strategy in, in open data is the data analysis and statistics. For us, it's very important, of course, to measure the impact of the implementation of the open data policy. We, we develop a quarterly reports on open data, for example, in central government, but um, I, would, I would try to, to to point out that we more or less every year we have um, a fully report where we try to 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 know about the activity of the infomediary and the reusing uh, sector. So we try to, to know uh, the impact of the, um, of the open data uh, of the public sector and how is it used and also to know to have feedback from the infomediary sector about what we have to what what should have what should be the, the next steps. 
So other pillar, of course, is the regulation. Uh, that's, of course, important because it makes possible to introduce the obligation to the public sector to open their data. So public entities uh, can in, uh, have this um, idea of this obligation in their daily uh, work. So at the end, in the public sector, regulation is also a very important pillar. Um, the next two pillars, are the national cooperation and the international cooperation, um, are of course one of the two of the, uh, the main uh, issues um, that we, we also work on during the in the Aporta initiative. The, in regarding the national cooperation, um, as you may know, Spain has a very complex uh, administrative structure. So for us, this, uh, establishing commissions with the regions and the municipalities um, is something that we have to do to, to get consensus on different issues. So we have um, a committee um, uh, that uh, meets together the central uh, government and also the regions. Um, we have another a group with um, the central government and the municipalities. And more of that, we have some also uh, sectoral agreements with some uh, different um, different, uh, for example, with universities and, and some sectors specific uh, to, to open their data. Regarding the international cooperation, we participate in the expert groups of the European Commission and also the OECD. Uh, the other pillar is the national uh, catalog that we we maintain within the in the Aporta initiative, and we also give the technical support queries, and we provide the we try to have as much available uh, data as possible. And the last one, but not the least important, but the most one of the most important two is the the one regarding innovation. We try to focus also in um, in boosting activities regarding the innovation with the open uh, with the data that we open and we provide through the national catalog so for example every every two years we do like an open data uh, challenge and open data awards to um, to boost for example initiatives in one sector i will talk about this um, in in another presentation we also celebrate some hackathons and we we um, finance and, and promote innovation projects or for smart cities or um, or other new uh, technologies uh, that also exploit data well just a quick a quick look of um, the different laws and royal decrees that we have to establish the legal uh, framework of open data. Here you can see that we have the directives of Europe and we have the con correspond transposition in Spain. But I would tr I would like to highlight of this uh, slide one issue that um, uh, we work on also here in Spain and we consider it's very important. It's that some technical we develop technical resolutions. And to um, to have the data or to publish the, the data in an homogeneous way. So the the issue of this is that um, sometimes we need to to use uh, not sometimes but always we need to to have the same vocabulary so on the same metadata to to publish the same information of different um, public bodies. So um, the most um, uh, one of the of the lines of work that we have now is to 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 develop these technical resolutions to get this consensus and to publish the information in the same way. That's something that we are quite focused now. I, it's for us indeed is the, is the most complicated part because we need a lot of um, a lot of uh, negotiation about um, in the different groups. But it's very important to to for the reuse of, of the of the data that, that we publish, not to publish it in 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 uh, different ways, but to have it in the in the same way as, as much as possible. Well, regarding the um, Spanish open data uh, governance model, as um, you can see, the data providers in, are the public sector, and we have the central, the regions, the local, and also universities. But we also consider the, the private sector to be um, a data provider. So um, on the other side, we have the intermediary where we have all the companies, entrepreneurs, also the public administration. That's something that uh, we, we are uh, seeing in the last years that uh, the public administration is also a reuser. It's also an intermediary of the public uh, sector information. So there are also, um, there are also targets of, of this information because they can also uh, improve the information that they have and to take decisions and to, to also to provide new, new services or more complex uh, services to finally to the citizens. 
in, in the middle, as you can see, what we can wear in the Iniciativa Aporta Initiative uh, is the, my ministry, the Ministry of Territorial Policy and Civil Service uh, for the interaction uh, for the public entities. But we have also the Ministry of Economy and Enterprise for the interaction with the users and the public entity Red.S, uh, uh, which also maintains the, the, cat the catalog and the data portal. We also have different committees, as I said before, with the regions, the municipalities and the universities, where we take common decisions to foster the open data uh, policies. Uh, well, here, okay. So, the portal. Um, here is the, the main um, screen of the, of the portal. Uh, where you can see that um, the catalog is just one piece of, uh, of it, a very important one, of course. But we have deployed a full content uh, website of uh, knowledge development, exchange, and interaction on open data and fostering its reuse. For example, uh, I would like you to pay your attention to sections as, the, for example, the interact section that's also in, it's in bold uh, letters. Um, we saw that publishing data without giving the users the possibility to ask for advice or comment uh, was not um, uh, very useful. So we thought that it's uh, important to add a lot of options to, to make the, the users or the users uh, also a part part of the of the portal and to also uh, integrate in the Aporta initiative. So we focus on establishing a channel of communication with users. Uh, giving them the possibility to request data, for example, in case the reuser cannot find it uh, or comment on every data set. Uh, the reporting, here is it in the next, next slide. I don't know, it's not working now. Well, yeah, so here, as you can see, the, the interact section I was talking about, and uh, where the user can also um, make comments on every data set and also they can report new application or for example publishing data of their uh, infomediary company or uh, for example make suggestions for, for improvement in the data portal or even in the whole uh, initi uh, portal initiative. Another important section is the current news uh, section when we publish information about events but also publish uh, reports uh, made by experts on the field of open data from the reuses community or you also make interviews to this type of uh, experts and publish technical reports about how to exploit the data that has already been published but also how to publish data with enough uh, quality. We have also reports now about new technologies that can be used to exploit the data like for example um, artificial intelligence. Well, uh, next slide. Well, it's the, um, uh, we have other options in the Spanish open data portal, like for example, a dashboard where you can see um, issues like uh, the visits to the portal, for example, in May, it's very small there, but uh, in May we have like 70,000 uh, visitors. Um, also, we publish information about the initiatives that have, that have been uh, uh, set into the portal and also the applications uh, or the companies uh, that have uh, put on information on the, on the portal. Also, we, we publish information about the data sets by administration level and by category, or for example, the most visited data sets or distributions by format and by administration level. Regardless, the catalog in the other, on the other side of the screen, you can see also that uh, we've, we are quite focused on publishing the um, uh, data in a machine readable format. So uh, here, all, all these uh, distributions, some of them uh, are uh, machine-readable formats. And we're quite focused on that. And um, it's true that now the, the portal has a, a lot of uh, data sets uh, published in this, type, in this type of format. So next screen. Well, it's the, um, about the impact. Uh, I've said some of these things before, but uh, for example, for, for the impact, uh, we at, uh, every two years we, we organize what we call the uh, Aporta Challenge. That's um, um, about a, a one topic this year. The topic is the environmental uh, data and environmental uh, possibilities um, uh, with open data. 
So the issues that um, we open the, the, the grant, so uh, different um, companies can, or even uh, or people can uh, apply for for participating, just uh, presenting one idea. Now we have the, the phase, we're now in the phase to, to let the jury uh, think about uh, which would be the three um, the, some of the, the the best of them, and then they have some type to deploy, uh, like a prototype to be presented at the end in the what we have our the annual uh, meeting in open data that will be held this year in November. Uh, regarding the impact, we also have this report I, I saw before that we call it uh, the informidiary um, uh, report or the, the, the report on information about the informidiary uh, sector in Spain. And uh, this year we are going to launch a new edition to know exactly uh, how the informidiary sector is growing, the employees, the employees they, they, they generate and uh, we try to characterize all the information about the, the infomediary sector. And finally, we are also the launching a, what we call sectoral a, a encounters or sectoral meetings where we have the um, we have the uh, in, in a topic uh, when we try to get together people from the public sector uh, expert in that topic or uh, competent in that topic and also uh, private companies that can deploy new services uh, using those data so we have the following one now in, in June the 26th of June if I'm not confused and uh, it's about also the environmental uh, data well next one and last one Well, here regarding the, the quality, uh, we, we, we also think that quality is quite important. As I said before, this is not just to publish the information, to publish the data, but also to do it in a, in a way that can be reused. So as I said, the technical resolutions to, to, have, um, to have it uh, in the same formats and also to have the information in, uh, using the same uh, vocabularies uh, for us is very important. But we also have um, developed a, a guideline to improve the quality of the open data where we try to to focus or to guide the different uh, the public sector different public entities that uh, publish their data how they should publish it so uh, just to have it uh, in with uh, enough uh, quality so um, uh, moreover that to give these guidelines sometimes we also uh, look for the information for the data they publish in the catalog and we contact with them to for example if we consider the quality is not enough to um, encourage them to to publish it with uh, with more more quality so the approach team is always uh, looking for this type of issues because i we think that uh, it's very important now that uh, all, everybody knows about open data but we have to improve uh, how how we, we publish it and and how we, we provide it so uh, this is all for for the spanish initiative thank you thank you very much Thank you, Aleida. Uh, I, I have so many questions of, of my own as well, and I see a very, very good, two good ones in, in uh, chat. Uh, one from Jakob is mostly related to uh, GDPR and the personal information you indirectly collect from users as they browse the website. Because that applies to everybody, I would actually keep it to the end, also in the interest of time. It is a problem for the European Data Portal itself, so I will be able to tell you how we deal with that. There's also one from uh, Julian Tate. Uh, oh, wow, cities. Mm, that's another very juicy one, if you don't mind. Again, I will keep it to the end, particularly because it, I don't know how long can uh, our guests stay beyond 2.30, and that's just the time for Roman Taps uh, to run his own. So if you don't mind, I will keep going uh, with the presentation. Uh, Romain is for you. Thank you. Um, I think I send the presentation. Yeah, perfect. Um, I will try to be brief because the time is uh, running. Um, so, uh, concerning, um, uh, is it possible to? Ah, it's here. Okay. Um, so, basically, I would like to begin by the. Uh, French Open Data Policy in France. Um, the French Open Data Policy is quite old because the Etalab mission was created in uh, 2011. 
um, we began uh, to work uh, on the uh, legal uh, framework since the beginning because it was a mandatory operation in order to have a mobilization of all the administrations. Uh, that's why uh, we work closely with the uh, cabinet of the Minister of uh, Digital uh, in order to work on the Digital Republic Bill, uh, which uh, was promulgated in 2016. Uh, in order to promote the circulation of data and knowledge to protect people in the digital republic and also enabling uh, global digital access um, for all the citizens. Um, so through this uh, legal framework, every public administration has to publish uh, in open data its administrative documents. Um, this data has to be open, uh, in open license and easily re reusable. Um, we um, worked uh, with uh, uh, we worked on specific decrees uh, that apply to the Digital Republic Bill uh, in order to identify just two uh, open licenses that uh, data producers can use. Uh, the first one is the open license that Etalab Team created uh, in 2011, and the other one is the open database license. Uh, which contain the share-like uh, condition. Uh, but the ODBL must be uh, justified by a general interest uh, context because it could be considered as a barrier to the reuse of the data sometimes. Uh, the administration has to remove with a standard method data uh, all the data which are not uh, for public use, so data with uh, specific um, uh, information as uh, protected by the, the administ uh, secret legal, secret legal, uh, legal secrets, sorry, uh, or with uh, personal data. So all administration must uh, work uh, since uh, the production uh, of the data on this type of issue uh, in order to publish something uh, uh, in open data. Every public administration uh, has to realize an inventory of its data in order to identify uh, all the data sets that can be reused or all the other that uh, are under GDPR. Uh, it's something mandatory and Etalab is working with, closely with all administration in order to do this work. Uh, we identify specific point of contact in all ministries um, mm -hmm. that are working on open data topics and uh, uh, since uh, two three years uh, we got uh, new actors uh, who are nominated inside all the administration called uh, uh, ministerial uh, data officers uh, that are in charge of the data governance in all ministries so they are not only uh, concerned by open data topics but uh, most widely on the data circulation, so between administration, but also between administration and civil society, in order to uh, it, to to lead some uh, open data policy uh, lead by data. Um, so, uh, if public administration keep their data secrets, um, citizens, associations, civil society. Uh, can contest this decision by uh, appeal to the administrative tribunal. Uh, so um, it's not uh, very coercive, but uh, it's a risk that each administration has uh, if uh, it doesn't want to open some uh, open data. Uh, so it's something important to understand, and it's thanks to uh, the Digital Republic Bill that uh, reaffirm reaffirmed the obligation of open data by default. And you know, when we worked on the legal framework, we were talking about open data by default, but now we are, we change a little bit our mind. Uh, we are most talking about open, open data by purpose, uh, because it's very difficult uh, to uh, identify all the data sets that can be uh, open. It's uh, an eternal work that we have to do with each administration. Uh, for us, it's much more interesting to work through uh, the impact and through uh, the capacity of uh, administration and civil society to create value around the data that we are going to publish um, than to, to enter in a, a exhaustive work of publishing data that is not very constructive and not very interesting. 
Um, so we got three uh, main pillars in our national public policy. Uh, mm -hmm. The first is the first one is the transparency. So uh, Etalab coordinates uh, the action of public administration and help users to uh, reuse this public information on a central uh, open data portal called data.gov.fr. Um, we are also working on the development of digital economy, uh, helping uh, companies, uh, NGOs, uh, startups in order to reuse the data and uh, also to identify new data sets that can have some impact for their, uh, um, for their economic models. It's very important for us to open uh, through the demand and not uh, in a top-down system. Uh, and last but not least, it's the efficiency of public action. Uh, when we are opening data, one of the main uh, beneficiary of the openness is uh, the administration itself. Uh, lots of direction services uh, need to understand that uh, open data is not something uh, constraining for them, but it's more an opportunity that they have to uh, integrate um, in the at the production time of the data in order to. Um, not only be in, um, in, uh, in the logical of uh, producing uh, public data, but more to identify the new demand around the data that they were publishing in their public mission service. Uh, open data is something that they open their mind and uh, it helps uh, civil servants uh, to uh, identify new opportunities to optimize their public mission services. Um, so the tool, um, the main tool that we created uh, in 2000, um, 2011 in this first version and uh, new release in 2013 is data.gov.fr. The particularity of this platform is that it's an open source platform. Uh, so all the framework of data.gov.fr is based on the UData framework, uh, which is used by Luxembourg, Portugal, uh, Serbia. Um, so uh, we are very pleased to uh, help uh, countries or territories in order to use these uh, free tools in order to implement an open data strategy. Um, but the most important thing that we wanted to integrate in this platform is the um, collective intelligence. Um, Data.fr is not only dedicated to administration uh, that have producing data on, it's also uh, a tool for civil society in order to publish data. Because uh, as uh, some countries told before, uh, public sector, uh, private sector, sorry, uh, has a huge impact uh, also in the crossing data uh, between public and private sector. Uh, so it was important for us uh, to propose a tool that can uh, integrate public data, but also collective intelligence data. Uh, the platform uh, can uh, help uh, data producers to uh, identify all the reuse of the data that uh, uh, data reusers will publish. Um, it's not exhaustive because it's based on the declaration of the reuse of the data, but it's uh, an indicator of the impact that the uh, open data can uh, generate. Uh, we also integrate some uh, social feature as a discussion tool uh, directly linked to the data sets. So each data reusers can discuss directly with data producers. And it's also a good way to uh, associate closely data producers with the data reusers and to maintain this contact uh, because to publish a data is not something so complicated, it depends on the database, but the most difficult thing is to maintain the data, to actualize the content, and to answer to all the data reusers' questions. So that's why for us it was very important to integrate these collaborative functions uh, inside the platform. Uh, nowadays, we got uh, more than uh, uh, 37,000 data sets, uh, 40,000 users, and more than uh, uh, 1,950 reuses. So uh, it's beginning to be interesting and uh, we can work on this stock in order to identify new opportunities. Uh, 
Concerning open data quality, uh, as I told you before, uh, we, are, we want to enter in a cycle of open data by purpose. It means that we need to offer some high level quality data sets. Um, that's why we launched two weeks ago a dedicated uh, platform called schema.data.gov.fr um, that is indexing French uh, open data frameworks, um, data frameworks that are uh, defined through a legal uh, application concerning public procurement, concerning uh, subsidies, uh, we go through the legal uh, side in order to uh, define a data structure shared by all the actors involved in the data production uh, in order to speak the same language. But we also take in account in schema.data.gov.fr uh, the data standards uh, based on the, uh, by practitioners. That it, it doesn't mean that we don't have a legal uh, data structure defined by the law that uh, some um, uh, specific sectors didn't begin to use some specific uh, data framework. I take the example of uh, transportation, for example, the GTFS is, uh, is a standard that uh, is used by the data producers and is a framework by the use, by the practice and not by the law. Uh, but it's important to take in account the two different uh, aspects of the schema in order to have a, a unique point of access uh, to allow data producers to work on the same language, on the same data structures, and also to allow data reusers to understand in a better way the, the, the different uh, data structures that public producers are going to publish. So, and it's uh, an important uh, element to to give more quality uh, to the, the data that we are going to publish. So if you want to visit the, the site, it's uh, in production. Um, so concerning impacts and showcase, um, we just uh, define three main topics, improving the efficiency of public action, improving the transparency of public action, and developing the economy based on the three main pillar that I gave you before. Uh, on the first uh, topic, um, um, through the application of uh, in open data, um, uh, we are now can predict some uh, accidents uh, often occur and can deploy teams more efficiently, more efficiently through the data we are publishing. Um, the Ministry of Security is publishing all the accidents uh, at the geolocalized uh, dimension. Uh, and most recently, we got some uh, very interesting data set published uh, for all the accidents in C in order to have exactly uh, the same uh, approach. This, this publication is very interesting because uh, all the data producers that were involved in this data publication uh, now use the open data as a way to improve their public mission services in order to have a better allocation of all the person who are working uh, on these topics and to share information uh, between uh, territories. It's very, very interesting how open data can be a, a vector of uh, efficiency for lots of public policies. Um, we recently uh, opened uh, a national database concerning the land ownership. So more than four, uh, 14,000 uh, transactions um, for since uh, on the last five years. Uh, that is something very, very uh, key for the public administration in order to give more visibility on the land ownership sector and to give more uh, insights for actors uh, that are working on developing new services uh, based on this data. Um, so developing the economy is something that uh, is very key for open data. Uh, we are proposing data sets, but we are also proposing APIs through um, uh, the uh, national uh, public service of data. Uh, that is uh, integrated inside the Digital Republic Bill. We, identifi we identify uh, nine uh, big databases, uh, the, 
the database of uh, all the companies in France, the database of, uh, uh, of the addresses, the database of the uh, lo uh, land, uh, not land ownership, but um, administrative, uh, uh, I don't know how the cadaster, I don't know if it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so some data set that are very essential for private sector, but also for public administration. And uh, we aim to work uh, more uh, specifically on the quality of these nine data sets, but also uh, to work on the extension of the perimeter of this uh, national uh, data public service. Um, slide, oh no, achievement and best practice. Um, so, um, France ranks third in Europe for opening public data uh, on the last Open Data Maturity report. Uh, so, it's not sufficient. We can do better. Uh, we need to improve our strategy. Uh, but um, we are quite confident because we got some uh, very interesting, uh, uh, interesting approach and uh, we got some uh, political support that is necessary in order to to give more impact to the to this uh, public policy 75 percent of data are automatically published in open data so we got lots of harvester that are now uh, uh, working uh, uh, basically we got some uh, editors like open data soft for example uh, that are directly linked to uh, data.gov.fr it's allow us to uh, uh, integrate lots of uh, territories, territorial data uh, published by cities, departments, uh, regions, and uh, it's something very, very interesting for us because uh, I didn't tell that before, but all the cities of more than 3,500 inhabitants must publish their data in open data. It's mandatory inside the Digital Republic Bill. So it's not only the national administration, but also the territories. Uh, the national platform allows everybody to speak with data producers. So um, nowadays we got more or less 400,000 visitors per month on data.gov.fr. And as we opened a very big uh, database last month concerning the land ownership transactions, uh, we are at 600,000 visitors on the last month. So. It means that open data can interest lots of people. Uh, it just depends on the type of data set and the type of reuse that you can share uh, with uh, actors. The essential data of public procurement uh, is one of the big work that we are working on. Uh, we are working on the standardization of all the public procurement data and we are trying to working on the open contracting data, data standards in order to compare our data with uh, international actors who are working with these uh, open data standards. Um, and uh, as I told you before, the essential data with huge economic and social impacts uh, that are inside the data public service uh, are very uh, key for us. And we just want to um, capitalize on this work that we launched two years ago in order to have an extension of the perimeter of essential data for, uh, French, for France. And I finish. Thank you. Thank you, Roman. So uh, the work you're doing is fantastic. Uh, I, 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 <laughs> let me just tell you it once again. Um, I'm very, very happy to have you here. And and uh, uh, before we go on, I see we we run out of time a little, but we can stay in the call if you can make it. I we have three or four questions in the chat already. Before we go through them. Uh, a quick reminder that tomorrow uh, we are actually in Brussels for the uh, data center organized by uh, our friend to the publications office. It's one more way, one tool you use yourselves uh, for engaging the audience and, and, and that's a nice opportunity. We have still time to go if you're willing to come to Brussels tomorrow. And in case you were wondering, uh, the Open Data Maturity report is coming again next year, so this year. Uh, we have finished collecting most of the contribution from the member states uh, last week and expect a new report around November, December 
this year as usual. Uh, and and uh, Herman was saying, uh, let's see if France is higher uh, this year, but uh, I wish you the best of luck uh, uh, for all of you.